back everybody I've been away um, Isolde ha has had an injury so I haven't been doing very many videos I don't want to do too much because when I do my videos I show the basics and then uh, the five principles of Doma Vaquera uh, moving forward stopping backwards um, going left and right you know on your seat and on your leg aids and also yielding so I think I've I've done pretty much everyone except for the leg yielding, but what I do is I, I explain the basics, but then I also want to, um, you know, show the advanced exercises, and I can't really do that yet, also with the leg yielding, because um, you sort of had some, some sesamoid problems left behind, an old injury that she used to have. Um, so we can't really do lateral movements at the, mov at the moment, but a good friend of mine, Peter, you know who you are, um, he told me that there are some things on tack that I could maybe still explain. Um, some things that I already explained, but actually the first time I remember if you saw my tack video, I didn't actually show it on a horse. So maybe this is a good time to actually show some things and explain some more things. And there's a couple of things that I've noticed when people actually buy Doma Vaquera tack um, that they don't fix right on their bridle, for example, or their saddle. So I'm just going to explain a couple of things. We're going to get back into it. It's a new year, so back, you know, doing our videos. Hopefully next time I'll be able to show you show you one riding Isolda again. So first of all, I'd like to point out, look at Isolda. She has her Doma Vaquera bridle on, um, and she has her Mosquito here. It's your leather one. I've done the horse hair a lot because I was too lazy to change it out. Um, but this is the one you should use for daily use. But this one has been gnawed on. So that was done by Isolda's beautiful grandson. Um, thank you very much, Curioso. Um, so now it looks like crap, to be honest. So apologies for that bad example. I should be setting the right example, but I'm not. So one of the things, besides the fact, I'll talk about the sereta in a minute. One of the things I'd like to talk about and what you see is that people, they don't adjust the nose band correctly. So if you can see here, what a lot of people do is because the nose band is quite low. So compared to an English nose band, it would have been say one, one length up. Um, what is it officially? Two, two fingers under the cheekbone. But actually with the Doma Vaquera one, it's more like four. So you have to think four under the cheekbone because if you have the bridle, so if you're doing a cavison, um, you don't have anything to go by. But if, you're, if you have the nose band on the bridle, obviously, then there's only one place you can really put it. And that's, let me see, that's here. So what a lot of people do is they'll put it here in between this leather strap, but obviously that's not meant for that because this is meant to go out. That just slips out. This is the end. So here's the actual buckle and here's here's the place where it should actually go through. That's what it's meant for. But I see so many people do it here. I see that in working equitation um, competitions. I pointed out to a girl the other day. I don't think she was very happy about that, um, but I, I meant well. The intention was good. Um, so that's a really important thing. So um, also, you know, when you ride your saws, you attach the nose band really, really tight so the horse can't open his mouth. Um, we don't do that. Um, first of all, when you're riding with a sereta, you want to make sure it is snug, not because you don't want your horse to open his mouth, but you want it snug so the sereta can't move, right? I'll explain that in a minute. Um, but even when you have, you know, once your horse is advanced and you just have your regular nose band on, you don't want um, it to be super, super tight in all those, you know, special ways they, they do to, to make it um, tighter and tighter, new inventions. It's ridiculous. Um, so we don't want to do that. But when you're riding with the sereta, you do want it snug because this is, it's metal basically, right? So you don't want it to, um, you know, go back and forth on the nose. Also, when you're using a cavison, a Spanish cavison, you don't want that to happen either because it's not very nice for the horse. So you wanna make sure it's snug so it doesn't move around too much. Now, um, I'd like to explain the way the sereta actually works. Um, so as you see, we have two reins on the sereta rings here, sorry, <laughs> on the sereta rings, and we have two reins on the bit. So the two reins on the sereta ring, uh, I've explained before, are really to help the horse um, learn how to move, you know, bent, see, she knows, uh, how to, and she'll do it on the bit as well, move its head. Um, but the beautiful concept is, first of all, it's meant to spare the mouth. I've told you that before, and I've put it in my theory, um, little videos and everything as well. <clears throat> but the principle is, because it's made out of one piece, so this is one piece under the leather, right? 
it's hard hard to see my hand is shaking because my hand my arm's getting tired um but it, it's hard to see but if i pull here because it's made out of one piece what you get is like a push effect on this side so if with a normal bit where you just pull you get a different response in the muscles than to when you pull here and you get a push here because when you pull something if i pull you on your jacket your initial response is to pull back is to resist right but when you get pulled but pushed at the same time you get a much different response so that's the thing about the sereta now if you see horses with with scars or you read things on internet and you know there's god knows there's enough out there um you know it's a shame because the sereta is a beautiful tool you'll see horses with scars now that scarring generally doesn't occur during riding that's usually during lunging so if you use a sereta this one has been um, covered with tape i ta covered it myself um, then you will get scarring sometimes because if horses you know young horses they act crazy on the lunge line and that you know as tight as you want to make it it'll always move a little bit um, so if that happens yeah then you will get some you know so a little bit of scarring but then the principle is that you at least spare the mouth excuse you feel that you at least spare the mouth so at least you're not pulling on their mouth which is much more important later i mean the nose is nice and a couple scars you know oh well i mean it's not i'm not condoning it or anything but you much rather have a very sensitive beautiful mouth right so that's the, that's the important thing there so when you start your horse off first they start with a, a snaffle um, and the reason why I have the Sereta back on Isol is because we're building up again and I want to make sure I can gy gymnasticize her enough and get enough bend um, out of her. Obviously, I do that mostly with my leg, but sometimes, you know, that last piece of the neck right here, you want, that's where you want, you know, oh, something scared her. Um, that's, whoop, what's that? Um, that's where you want the bend to come from. That's where you get your, you know, um, the stretch in the body, basically. So you want that last piece here at the top here, right behind the pole. That's where you want that last piece, because that's when they when they let go of that last piece. That's when you really get that stretch through the whole, you know, lateral side of their body. Um, so when you're riding, you obviously have the reins, uh, you know, in your hands. You you use two hands, and you'll use um, three reins in one hand and one rein in the other hand. Um, I'll explain that another time. It's hard to tell. Um, or actually maybe I'll do it in a minute um, so you do it like that now if you have an advanced horse you might want to um, train a little bit with the sereta like I said and then at a certain point you want to go back to your two reins so what you do or what what the Spanish do is then you put it around their, their neck and then you just tie it let me see if I can do that with one hand yes I can how cool is that maybe I'll tie a knot now then I'll be out of out of the shot um, so then you'll tie it up under the neck you can do that from the from horseback um, tie it up under the neck and then you can just use your two reins and then you know you, you carry on practicing um, or training let me put it that way um, so that's that's how they do that basically so they'll you know often they'll go back to using the sereta just to really you know it's, it's for training purposes even on advanced horses advanced horses that maybe need to go back a step because of rehabilitation or whatever um, so that's, those are the principles, some principles of the Sereta. I wanted to point out the, the chin, um, the chin chain again. Um, so I've explained in my theory videos um, how you need to have, be able to put two fingers in there. But yeah, depending on how big your fingers are, I mean, if you're a man, obviously two fingers for a man or maybe like three for a woman, you want to be able to put two fingers, but to know for sure it's the right length. Um, well, let's make sure each other stops. You want to be able to engage it, and when it's, don't turn your face, Isolde, when it's 45 degrees and the horse gives, he 40, around 45 degrees, that's the right length. So say around 40, 45 degrees, and the, and the chin chain is engaged, that's what you want. So um, that's really important because I see too many people really using the chin chain way too loose and thinking that they're being more kind to the horse, but they're actually not, because depending on how high the port is in the mouth, if this can go more than 45 degrees, that's going to tilt. And what you see a lot of times, I mean, you know, sometimes it's a moment, it's a picture and it's a moment in time and you'll, it'll be a little more than 45 degrees. But if you see consistent, you know, over 45 degree angle, um, the chin chain is too, too loose. 
And what happens is then your bit tips, and then what can happen is that that, that port is going to go against the, the roof of the mouth. So I've explained before, you, you know, how the bit works. So if you, if you, if it, yeah, good. If you're giving, if you tilt the bit, engage the bit, it actually, it engages this piece of your bridle. So this tilt, which creates more pressure behind the pole, you have your chin, and then of course you have the port in the mouth. So those are things you can look, make sure you look on my other videos um, to um, see how, how, uh, how that exactly works. I, I explained the technicalities of it and everything. So a couple things I also still wanted to explain about the saddle. Um, so a lot of people, I also see a lot of people um, putting their girth behind the stirrups. So on a Don Vaquita saddle, the stirrups are, ooh, shaky hand, are kind of quite far forward. Normally you would, you would expect it in the middle, um, a little bit more to the back, like on an English saddle, but it's quite far forward. So you, a lot of people, they put the girth the girth um, behind the stirrup strap. You don't want to do that. Your girth has to be in front of your stirrup strap. There's your girth right there. And you want to make sure that the, the buckle is under. So the thick part of your girth is under the tummy, obviously. And then the rest goes under the sheepskin and in front of your stirrup. So I hope you can see it. That's your stirrup right there. That's your stirrup strap. The buckle is under there and you want to make sure your girth is in front. Um, now another question I got was also how to um, attach the stirrups, uh, the stirrup leathers to the saddle. Now, um, it's kind of tricky. It seems easy, but it's, it's a little bit tricky. So you have this piece of leather. Um, don't move, Isola. <laughs> and any touch of her tummy and she moves. She's like a Ferrari, I tell you. It's, it's really cool, but sometimes a little bit tricky. Um, so don't move. Um, so you have that piece and there's a little loop. So there's a loop here. Now there's two ways of attaching it depending on your, your leathers. And I wouldn't say one's better than the other, but basically this loop should actually be at the top. Should be at the top here by this piece. Um, but when I do that on mine, then I can't adjust to the right length. So I put it on the bottom, but technically it should be at the top. And then you just, you run it um it goes up and then there's two i hope you can see this there's two um two rings basically so you run it through the bottom one first and then you bring it down and then you see because then you have this strap oh i hope this is visible oh isolda's walking away stop isolda any movement um and she goes um so this one goes up then it goes onto that top buckle there and then it goes down again and then under through your stirrup and then up again and then once it's up it goes through here so it goes through um, you know where you put it in the hole and then once you're finished you push it back up under the sheepskin and the same goes for your girth when you have leather left over you don't leave it hanging by the side you put it back up under the the stirrup leather uh, I'm sorry, under the sheepskin. Um, and you'll notice as well, so I have my cover on today. That's what you do for normal everyday work. You don't have your um, uh, Manta Escribera here, you know, that wool blanket, just regular work and you cover it up so it's nice and stays nice and clean. So those are just a couple of things if you buy a Dolma Laquera saddle. Um, and then uh, one more thing I wanted to point out, um, your crupper, I have told that, um, but how do you adjust your crupper? Well, you want to make sure, kind of with, with everything, because we, we came from harness horses, um, and with harness horses, you want to make sure that one hand, one hand fits underneath. So with Doma Wakita, it's super important to not do it too tight, because when the horses are riding, when you're riding your horse, especially with Doma Wakita, you want them to engage their hindquarters. So you don't want um, it to be too tight, because if it's too tight, they can't, you know, they can't um, pivot, basically, their, their hindquarters. So that wouldn't be a good thing um, if it was too tight because you're not going to, you know, you're going to uh, prevent them from, from doing what you're asking them to do basically with riding, which is to engage, in, engage themselves. Um, so I think I'm actually I'm going to get on and I'm going to show you how to hold the reins. This is a super important one, too, since we're doing these little tack tips. 
um, that's actually a quite nice one to, to point out as well. So I'm going to jump on and then I'll be back to you in a minute. Hi everybody. Um, I'm back, except I'm back a day or so later. Um, I, I forgot to push record the other day. So um, we're going to, I have to do this again. So I believe I have a different scarf on today. And I'm a little bit more tired than the other day. So, um, so what I was going to show you is was it was how to do the reins, how to hold the reins. So I'm back on Isolda, and I'm going to show you um, how you can hold, how you hold the double reins, and how you hold. Uh, so when you well double when you hold two reins in one hand, and how you hold them double. Um, as far as that's possible while I hold the phone. Um, so I'm going to have to um, stop every now and then and then just start over because I have to actually uh, show you uh, my hand and what I'm doing. So um, so when you start off you actually do have uh, four reins and you use two hands then you eventually go from three reins in one hand and one rein in the other hand. So uh, I will actually switch to my hand so I can actually explain that way. So there you are we're back. Um, so now I'm holding the reins just in one hand. Uh, I have them quite loose, but that's um, to be able to show you something. Um, so uh, first of all, what you notice is there's a knot. So what I notice with a lot of people that buy Domo Akira um, bridles is they don't do the knot in the reins or they don't do the right knot. Um, mine was actually, as you can see, the stitching is gone. Um, so normally there's a long piece that's stitched at the end of the reins. Um, this is because you want to make sure that your, uh, when you do a knot that the reins stay equal length. If you wouldn't have a stitch in there, um, then you would have um, unequal reins. So that's for, for that reason. So um, I actually posted a video on Facebook of my friend Francisco de la Oliva um, uh, doing the rain knot. I wanted to do one myself, but he, made, he did it so beautifully. He actually makes bridles and saddles. Um, so that was uh, good enough. Maybe I'll maybe I'll post it or paste it at the end of this video. I have to see, or at least uh, refer to it at the end of this video. In any case, um, so, but you can find it on my Facebook, Santaro, as well. So that's why you um, put the uh, that's why the the reins are <coughs> stitched, so you can put a knot at the end. The knot is easy, so you can pull your reins up um, when you need to shorten your reins, etc. Uh, it's easier to grab your reins when there's a knot at the end. Um, so, and like I said, the reason why there's stitching is, as you notice here, so you see that little uh, bump, that little loop in my reins? Uh, when your reins are, sh are straight, I can't pull them with my other hands, but if I would pull that knot straight up, my reins would be equal. But because the, that right rein is making a shorter uh, turn or a shorter curve, see that? Um, you have some rein left over. Um, and the left rein here is making a bigger curve. So it is, is straight, doesn't have that little loop in it. So that loop actually tells you, even though you might think then your reins are, are not the same length, but that's actually an indication that they are. So always make sure you have that loop in your reins um, when you're actually, when you're riding, because that means they're equal. If you would just grab the knot and pull it up, you would see that they're equal, because then the reins would be, um, you know, they wouldn't be making a, a curve. Um, so then they would be straight. So, um, how to hold the reins in one hand. So if you, ha if you have the reins, you would grab them uh, like this. You would just, you know, hold on to your reins the, the most easy way possible. You get a little bit from the top. And then you just put your pinky here in the middle and you hold them like that. And you kind of hold them with your, your hand flat, not like you're holding a cup of milk like we learn in English. Now you just kind of hold it flat. And the only real movements that your reins will do is go this way. Let's see if you show that. Yes, good girl. I took my sedata off, by the way. Um, then the horse will turn their head, and if I turn my, if I bring my hand that way, then the horse looks to the left. And that's actually, you know, how you get curvature besides your inside leg, of course. But that's what your reins help. Your reins are actually secondary um, uh, help or, or aids, basically. So when you turn, you turn with your leg weight your leg aids and your weight. And to get that curvature in their body, you use your inside leg. Um, your outside leg is always back, of course, when you're going uh, in a turn or slightly back because you turn your body and that's an automatic 
uh, thing that happens and it immediately puts you on your inside seat bone. Um, and then if you slightly, you know, teach your horse that if I engage that inside rein a little bit like that, then she's going to look that way. If I engage this inside rein, assuming I'm going to the left, then she looks that way. And that's all your reins do. And of course, go back and then she gives. And then I go forward to give her some more space in case I want her to canter. Um, but your reins never go up there. So if you're doing a, a uh, you know, a speed up, a arriar, as they call, um, like a little sprint, never put your hands up there. Um, Antonio says, um, don't be a cowboy. We don't do that. You pretty much keep your reins more or less here and you keep them slightly low. When you're training the young horses, of course, sometimes you have them a little bit higher, but in general, the 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 position is to have them low, left, right. It's small movements. Up, back, left, right. So, but let's say you you are riding with a sereta, so you have your other reins. So you see them there. Your other reins are um, not tied at all, and I explained to you earlier, um, that's so you can tie them around their neck. Um, so when you want to uh, just train, um, then you don't need to uh, you know, and you have a more advan advanced horse, either a horse that is advanced or a horse that is almost advanced, then you can always tie them up around their neck and then you can just, you know, ride with your, your double rein um, like this in one hand and you can kind of go back and forth depending on the training and how the horse is doing uh, at that moment in time or at that, uh, on that day. Um, so let's say, assume you have your, your sereta. So in that case, you would want to put your ring finger in the middle and then you grab your sereta rein, which is here on the outside. And it's just like with a, um, uh, uh, with a dressage um, bridle where you would have two, uh, a full bridle, where you would have uh, two bits, your snaffle and your weymouth. Um, you always have your snaffle is always the furthest, that rein is the furthest from your thumb. So my sereta rein, or in this case I have it actually on the mouthpiece, is the furthest from your thumb. So that's, that's your left hand. So that means you have three reins in one hand. That's in, in that case always the case. Now if a horse is further then you would have four reins in one hand. So then I just pick up the other rein and let me see, I would actually keep that rein on the other side. It's not doing it. Oh well. Um, but that would be on the right side uh, hanging there. Now if I was starting this horse, I would actually take this right rein in my right hand and I would hold it as if, you know, I was holding an English uh, rein. So that's basically pretty simple there. So those are the principles of holding the reins. Um, um, like I said, the sereta is really to teach your horse to turn. So in the beginning, when you do that, of course, with your, with your, uh, uh, if you only had the curb rein, that wouldn't, you know, uh, teach the horse. So it's easier when you have a sereta. At the mouthpiece, it's possible too, to teach a horse to do that. Um, I've had a student and we taught it like that without a sereta. Um, but in any case, it's, it's harder than to do it just with, uh, with your curb. Nothing is impossible. These are just certain things that have been done for hundreds of years, pretty much, um, in Spain. So, um, so that's how they do them, and that seems to make the most sense. Um, I really want that rain on the right side. It's kind of annoying me. <laughs> so um, that's how you hold them. Um, I'll come back and uh, wrap this up. So that was it, basically. So just a, a couple of pack tips. Um, as I call them. Um, if there's anything else that you wonder about, just let me know. I mean, I'll be finishing my five principles soon um, as Isolde gets fitter and fitter. Um, so I can start talking about leg healing because then we'll be doing lateral movement. Um, we'll be doing um, uh, lateral movements in all gates and then, of course, um, different speeds, etc. So, um, so I want to make sure she's fit before we actually do that because we're just allowed to start to start to do lateral movements um, after her, her um, little injury there. Um, so make sure you subscribe if you haven't subscribed already because then you always know when I post a new video. Um, tell me if there's anything you'd like to know, things I missed. Um, I'm just flying by the seat of my pants here and trying to offer anything and everything I know. Um, but questions and requests are always welcome. 
Um, make sure you like my videos too, of course. I have a lot of people that have seen one video, but uh, then I have questions, and then I say, well, I actually have another video that explains that. So do make sure you subscribe um, and spread the word, spread the gospel, help us spread the gospel of Doma La Quiera. Um, it's an amazing uh, riding. There's been lots of fun stuff happening in Doma La Quiera right now in Spain, as well as around the world. Championships this year won't be in Jerez. Uh, they'll be in El Monte but um, maybe next year, so that offers a big opportunity to tell the story of Doma La Quiera uh, to a lot of people as uh, the riding school in Jerez de la Frontera is obviously a very, uh, a very famous place. So um, thank you for listening. Um, hope you enjoyed and keep the questions and requests coming. Thanks.